Hi guys, it's Matt here from pilotpracticeexams.com where you can pass your exams in half the time. So let's have a look at the how to fill out your flight planning sheet. So I'll just quickly scroll down in case you haven't seen one of these before. Looks like this. Um, has your position, your lowest safe altitude, your flight um, or altitude that you're going to fly at, your true airspeed, your track magnetic, the wind, now don't forget wind uh, is given in true on the R4s and you need to convert that to magnetic if you're going to do calculations of it. Your heading magnetic, your ground speed, distance of that interval, estimated time of the interval, estimated uh, elapsed time when you're right at the end of that interval, um, your planned estimate, in other words the clock time, your revised estimate, in other words if you're travelling faster or slower then you'll amend that, and your actual time at the point or at the destination. Then we scroll down and you've got uh, down the bottom here, you've got the numbers down the bottom for sending your, uh, for calling for your fax and uh, sensor. Now here you can put pilot notes like radio frequencies, runway numbers, uh, pages in URSA that you might need to refer to. So say you're going into, as an example, Tamworth and Corindai. You might put Tamworth page da 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 in Ursa, um, Corindai, boom. Okay, and you might actually make some other notes, but I do always suggest you note down your page numbers because you have to, have to find it in flight. It's just, you want to do everything you can on the ground. Anyway, let me get over here to fuel calculations. So I'm going to have to do a separate video on the fuel calculations, or it's, this video is going to be too long. So in this video, let's look at the top half of the sheet. We'll call this video part one. In part two, we'll look at how to do the fuel calculations. So, so what I like to do first up is I like to space out my locations. Now, the reason I do that is that if you compress these all one after another, what happens is you make a mistake and your planning sheet can end up so messy it gets very hard to read. Also, by spacing it out, I can add extra waypoints if, if I decide it's necessary along the way. I can also... Um, Add extra detail here like runway numbers, AWIS uh, frequencies, FIA changes, or whatever I want. I can make this a much more usable plan. So that's why I tend to space them out, and I've spaced them right out like that. So, so quickly throwing this one into AV plan on the um, EFB to give you a bit of an idea. Now, you, what you first thing you want to do is grab out your map and draw a few pencil lines of your planned. Um, track for your flight. Now, if we look at this, this one here is Tamworth, right? Um, Port Macquarie. So the flight led, the distance from Port Macquarie to Tamworth is 107 nautical miles. The estimated um, time is 62 minutes. Now that's not taking into account winds because I haven't turned on winds or done anything like that for the moment. But straight up that tells you something. What that tells you is you're required by law to have a position fix every 30 minutes. So you need, technically you need two, okay, because you're going to be in flight for over an hour. Some people would argue that once you have sight of Tamworth, that's your position fix. Um, so they would say that you only need one. I'll let you discuss that with your instructor. So straight up, that's why I've left two spaces minimum between Port Macquarie and Tamworth. So one or two, depending on which you're going to go with. Now, then what we want to do is we want to look at this uh, map in more detail. And we want to try and decide what are we going to use for those position fixes. Okay, so remember that you've got to use something that's very obvious because sometimes it's going to be hard to find. Now in this particular one, it's going to be very difficult because this is over high terrain, mountainous terrain. So even though right there, I'll just zoom that in for you, right there we cross straight across a river and it's not too far off halfway, halfway is around about here somewhere. By the way, ignore this line, that's just your radio frequency change. Um, so, and once we get up here, these rivers, there's lots of them, we might mistake which one's which. So we probably don't, even though we cross straight across their path, That'd be difficult, although you could say, right, I'm going to look for, that looks like a fairly major one, so that's a good one. And then you could work out your time interval and say, right, um, in another however many minutes that is, I'm going to pass over one, two, three, 
four, and I'm going to use the fourth one, or maybe even the fifth one, as my next checkpoint. That looks like a more major one. That could be a better one to use. Okay? So that I would then put a waypoint there and a waypoint there, and I would then go and add those to my plan. Okay, so I've added those in, and I've called one of them Waypoint 22 Hastings River. Or I could have just called it Hastings River, and I've called the other one Waypoint 23 River 5. Okay, or I could have just called it River 5. Now what we need to do is look at our lower safe altitude. So what we do here is we go to our low en route or en route low chart, and it looks like this. And I'll just show you. So there's Port Macquarie and there's Tamworth, and I'll just show. I'll get rid of that rocket box and just show you the zoomed in version. So this is the zoomed in version. There's Port Macquarie, Tamworth's out to the left somewhere. So this here is your heading. This is your distance, 107 uh, nautical miles, and that's your lowest safe altitude. 6200. So straight away you can confirm that um, that you know you, the calculations that you come up with. However, if you find a say Walker, which you know might be about here somewhere, there is no uh, no flight track for that or no um, details for that. But what you can do is you can um, you know cross check it. There's 298. There's 269. If the Walker one was in the middle, you'd be able to estimate the angle. Okay, and again, you can estimate it, and also you grab out your ruler and cross-check it that way. Definitely do that, okay? So, then we go back to here, and our lowest safe altitude, according to that, is going to be 6,200. All right, so I'm going to put it in here, 6,200. Now, because I'm heading west, I now need to think about my hemispherical levels. So when we're flying east, it's 1,500, 3,500, 5,500, 7,500, and 9,500. When we're flying west, it's all the even numbers. So this one's going to be 6,500 is my lowest safe altitude. Now, just I, you, you can be as paranoid or safety conscious or as you want with this, but I, what I then do is I um, go and I look at the WAC. So here we have the WAC, there's Tamworth, and Port Macquarie is way down that end. I don't want to scroll over there. I guess I can. There we go. So what you do is you need to look within 10 nautical miles either side of your track. So you scan along here, and you're looking for these mountain peaks. 4,800, there's 4,082, 4,365, okay? And you go all the way along your route, and you find the highest mountain peaks or the highest towers that are on mountain peaks. And sometimes you might need to zoom into the VNC um, in particular areas, but in this particular area, the um, Newcastle VNC and the WAC are probably going to be sufficient um, combined with that lower safe altitude. And you just want to confirm that that number you got off the on route low looks acceptable to you by looking at the terrain that you see along the track. So once we've done that, then we go back to our uh, planning sheet. And we can move on to our TAS, right? Now, your TAS that you're going to write on here, okay, is the TAS for your aircraft. So in this particular case, let's use 100 knots, right? Now, the track we've worked out from the low on route chart or from using your protractor, which you have to use, okay, is 269. The wind, let's just, for the ease of sake here, um, let's make the wind zero. All right, it's a calm day, there's no wind. So generally what you would do is you would then say that was 20 knots. Um, oh, let me do it. So let's say it was, uh, say, uh, 100, 20. All right, and you get that from your R4 for the level that you're going to fly at, okay? So, then what you would do is you'd grab out your wind calculator, your CR4 or CR2 or 3 or your E6B, whatever flight calculator you've got, and you would calculate what the impact of that is and what you're going to have to head. Now, don't forget, the winds on the R4 are given in true, but we're looking to fly a magnetic. Now, I have a bunch of videos on how you can do that, so just go to my YouTube channel and you'll see those 
um, under the CR4 section. So let's just, for ease of use here, so I can move on without having to do that calculation, let's assume the wind was zero, okay, and therefore that our heading was going to be, say, 269, right? Now, our ground speed, because there's no wind, is going to be 100. But after you do your normal calculations, you'll generally find that you've got, say, a headwind or a tailwind. Now, let's say you have a 10-knot 10, 10 headwind, then that means your ground speed is going to be 90 knots. If you've got 10 knots worth of tailwind, you're going to have a ground speed of 110 knots. In this case, we're just going to go with 100. Okay, now let's just assume for a moment that um, those two points are 40 miles, just, just to make it easy for you. Okay, so what we're going to do is we set our one hour mark on 100 knots. Now, if we had to allow for that wind and our ground speed was 90 knots, we'd have to set that marker on 90. Or if it was 105 knots, um, your ground speed, you'd set that marker on 105. But in this case, we've said there's no wind, so we set it at 100. And then what we do is we read around till we get to 40 miles, and then we come into our time. So that... This one's our time, because that's one hour, and that's our distance. So we just, at 40, um, it's going to be around about, say, 24 minutes is our estimated time interval. So what we do, both of those legs, they're 40, so we put 24 minutes in each of those boxes. Okay? So our estimated elapsed time when we reach that point is 24 minutes. Our estimated elapsed time when we reach that point is 24 minutes. Uh, sorry, is 48 minutes. Okay? Our planned estimate, so let's say we we're going to leave at 9 o'clock or 9 a.m. Well, actually, let's make it 10 a.m. So it's going to be, let's talk in Zulu time. So 10 a.m. is 000 Zulu time in this for here. So um, what we would end up there with there is 0024. 24 minutes past 10 a.m. Here um, would be 0048. Or you could just, if it's depending on how long your flight leg is and how many legs you're doing and stuff like that, then depending on how many numbers you're going to need, need to use here. Now, and then you just continue that pattern that we've just done there for your whole plan down. Then when you're in flight, what happens is, Let's say we we're about to take off and we got an inbound call from an air ambulance and they said, oh, look, mate, can you hold? So we, we end up running. The wind still works out the same, but we end up running five minutes late. So when we fly, so we take off and we climb overhead. And when we go to depart, we do our estimated, uh, our, sorry, our departure time and we go departure time 05. So now we need to revise that and change that to 29 or 0029, however you want to do it. Okay, and then this one here would become uh, 0053, is our revised estimate. Okay, so you're keeping track of a revision. Now, let's say that in flight, you actually uh, flew quicker. Now, don't do too many of these. You, you want to do these as you go, and I'll show you why. Because look at this. Let's say you get up there, and even though it's predicted to be no wind, you find that you've got a 10-knot tailwind. Okay? So what happens is you... What you do is you go here, and you go your actual time. Let's say we got... I don't want to work it out, but let's say you got there at 0, 2, uh, 7 was the time that you got there. So you know you've got a tailwind, and you calculate it out, and don't quote me on these figures, but let's say you calculate it out, and it's 10 knots. So what we do is we quickly jab, grab out our flight computer, okay, and I sp I'm spinning it around right now, and I'm flicking it to our, I put the one-hour mark on 11, which is 110 knots, and I read back to 40, and it's now saying that we're going to do it in, say, 22 minutes. So what we do is we rub out that and our revised estimate now for this leg is 22 minutes after that time okay so what we do is we throw in our revised estimate is going to be uh, 0049 okay and then what we do is when we get there let's say it was 0048 okay so the winds picking up we're getting quicker 
So you quickly grab out your flight computer and you, and you do that as you go, okay? And the reason you're doing that, um, we're not so much concerned when it's, a fl when it's a tailwind, but you could get yourself into some life and death situations if you didn't make that revision and you were running into headwinds and you had a really long flight and perhaps you were heading towards uh, the end of the day or you're heading into uh, worsening weather. Yep. So you really need to be doing those calculations and in your learning phase, you have to do them. So they're not going to pass you unless you can do these. So that's basically how we do the top half of the form, guys. And so follow all those steps that I showed you across that line all the way down. And then do these last two columns in your once you're up in the air in flight. Hope that's helped. I'm Matt from pilotpracticeexams.com where you can pass in half the time. Please give us a like or a share or a comment. It's the only way that YouTube knows that this content is worth sharing. And if you are an Australian pilot studying your RAOs, your RPL or your PPL, head on over to pilotpracticeexams.com. We have, you know, just 2,000 plus practice questions. We have a rapid study um, learning. Our student pilots just love us. Look, just get over there and check us out. And if you're from Australia, feel free to join our Facebook group. But if you're from overseas, don't, please, because it is an Australian-only group and we will uh, not process the entry anymore.